Hello, this is Tommy from JKRI. Today I'm going to give you a short introduction to Karaya. Karaya is JKRI's new experimental unit test and assertion framework for LabVIEW. You can learn more of Karaya on github.com slash jksoftware slash Karaya. There you can find uh, installation instructions and usage instructions for Karaya. Uh, for this introductory video, I've created a small class uh, called integer dictionary. Uh, the integer dictionary uh, would be used for storing uh, any data uh, using uh, integers as keys. So uh, for each integer, I could store uh, some data and later on retrieve that data using an integer as a key. So this could be useful, for example, uh, as an in-memory store uh, for different kind of uh, values that you want to store uh, by ID and use the integers as an ID. So first of all, I would have uh, a VI that allows us to uh, write uh, the key value pair. Uh, the key here is an integer and the value is any lab view data. I would have a, a read operation, uh, again using key as an integer and reading uh, uh, the data uh, by value, and a delete operation, uh, again using the key as an inter integer and then telling uh, whether it was found and, and deleted. So if I have this uh, class, uh, the next thing I would like to do is naturally test uh, somehow if it's going to work. So let's create a new VI and let's figure out first if if you're going to read uh, something uh, from an empty dictionary, we assume probably there shouldn't be anything uh, in an empty dictionary. So let's provide some key and see what do we get as a result. So this is probably something that uh, whenever you write code, uh, you would probably want to validate uh, if your code works. Uh, you would do something uh, along the lines of this. So I've created a simple test VI that would test uh, if, if my library is working uh, as I'm expecting it to work. So let's see what, what do we get out here if, I, if we run this. Uh, I'm not gonna bother cleaning up the block diagram yet. Uh, but I might want to clean up uh, the front panel just a tiny bit so that it's easier for you to, to see what's going on. So let's run this. Uh, we didn't find anything and we returned uh, an empty variant. So uh, this uh, worked as we expected. Uh, okay, it would be nice if this was uh, something that we could uh, use as a unit test uh, further down the road uh, should we ever change the, uh, the functionality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this VI into a unit test. So let's go to JK Toolkits. Oops, I don't have Karaya installed. So let's install Karaya right away. So you can install Karaya using uh, VI Package Manager. And now it should be installed. And hopefully the palettes are updated, they are. So I have the carrier palette here. So first thing I'm going to uh, do is I'm going to drop an assertion VI and our assumption is that uh, there should not be a key uh, for uh, a 
an empty, I mean, the, the, the key value per shouldn't be present for an empty dictionary. And uh, so for any value, our example value here is, uh, we're using a key of seven, uh, that should not exist. So this should not return an error. And let me save this. So I created a folder called test. I'm going to, so test empty dictionary. So I'm creating a test now, uh, moving it to the test cases folder. And so this is not the test quite yet. I'm just validating. Um, so let me run this, and this should not return an error, which is, which is correct. So if, and just let me show you if I had wired the true here, and run this, you would see that this would return an error. So this uh, assertion VI is expecting a false as an input, and if it gets a false, it does not return an error. Now I want some description for, for the error if it occurs, and let's call this expecting empty variant, uh, empty dictionary to uh, not have any elements. So, okay, so that's now created. So let's create another assertion for, for the value. Uh, and so we are expecting the value to be an empty variant when returned uh, from uh, the dictionary because naturally uh, there should not be anything in the dictionary when it's empty. So I'm going to create a similar case here. Let's create a constant and write some description expecting um, uh, expecting a value to be an empty variant when uh, element is not found. So okay, so we have now two assertions. Let's just merge the errors. So we are good to go. Error here, error here, and error here. Okay, perfect. And if we run this, this again should not return an error, and it doesn't. So perfect. These assertions work as we expected. Uh, so now I'm going to convert this VI into a unit test test by dropping define Uh, define test we are here and right now if I run this you see I get this Karaya user interface to pop up uh, it tells me that both of the assertions passed correctly in this VI and you see that the default name for the test is test empty dictionaries that VI I could define the label uh, somehow differently say like empty scenario okay and perfect now if i would run this you would see the label would be empty dictionary okay perfect so now i've created a first test and let me just quickly uh, call this empty scenario test and perfect so I have my first test case, and as you were able to saw, uh, uh, I was able to create a debug VI, uh, test if my functionality worked, and then just a matter of a minute or so, convert that debug VI into a test case. I'm going to create a similar test case uh, just by creating a copy of this. Uh, uh, for other operations. So let's create another test case to write and read operations uh, for this dictionary. And let me just change the icon. Write, read, test. Okay, and so now our assumption is uh, if we write a value and then a read a value from this uh, dictionary that I created. 
adapt to that that whatever we write uh, would probably be the same thing as we read so i'm writing here for key seven for let me just clean this up a little and so for key seven let's write uh, say a string uh, saying hello world uh, okay the string is now written there and now if we read the dictionary with the same key and the seven is the key now so our assumption probably is that this value would be equal so I'm going to use uh, the assert equal again uh, and to be quite honest uh, this probably will fail actually just because the type is different and there's some uh, things I still would like to improve for example adding a better type support uh, and let's just run this oh it actually did work great uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm validating that the uh, whatever I write uh, to the dictionary with a specific key uh, is equal uh, to whatever I read uh, with the same key and now let's also assume that it needs to be found so this found input needs to be true so let's validate that as well I'm going to create uh, again an other assertion here and just validating that the found input returns true and if I run this now yes if you look at these uh, strings here they are having the default value so they are not very descriptive so I'm still going to add uh, just labels uh, for this test case so that we know what's going on so this uh, is assuming that well, let's say expecting expecting that that dictionary returns written value when read okay so that that's the test for for that thing let's just clean it up a tiny bit to make this a little bit easier to to read and then for this other one we're going to create a string label as well and this is expecting written value to be found okay perfect so we created uh, another unit test case and this we would call uh, read write dictionary okay and if I write run this uh, we see that that one works as well so now I have two test cases so obviously I probably would like to uh, run multiple of these uh, test cases at a time and not needing to run this test and then then run this test uh, but instead uh, it would be easier to to run them all at the same time so I'm just going to create a copy uh, of this this test and uh, call it test all uh, let's change the icon still and call this test all and now let's clear up everything here with exception of the merge errors so now i can drop these two individual test cases that i created here okay and run oops i forgot to hook up the connector pane so I need to do this um, I need to hook up the connector pane for both the tests so these are just regular sub VIs and that's really particular to now understand and now we're doing just regular lab view with just the extra bit 
it allows you to use regular lab view to create unit tests without really going outside of your typical lab view user experience and, and development environment so everything happens just in the purest uh, way within lab view uh, and you really need to do absolutely nothing else test all uh, and so we're good to go so now if i run this what's going to happen is it's going to run both the test cases that i just created and so the cool thing here is i can create uh, these test case hierarchies by just dropping sub vi's uh, and and using this define test vi uh, to consolidate or to do to, to tell Karaya that this vi is going to be a test and then create large 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 hierarchies of tests and run them just using lab use user interface and I can go here and modify this test for this dig scenario so we can change things uh, and rerun things and, and, and everything updates alive. Uh, I can go and edit uh, my code. So let's change here something, for example, the, let's make this false uh, so that our test case should fail. Okay, now this one of my tests should fail because I'm returning an incorrect value. And as you can see, uh, one of my tests failed. So I know that something is wrong uh, with my library. So this is uh, sort of the fundamental thing about Karaya. As you saw earlier, we can start from uh, scratch, start creating a debug VI, then with just a matter of a minute or so we can convert that debug vi into a unit test and include that unit test into a suite of tests uh, that we can use uh, to validate the code in uh, in our project so again to learn more about karaya go uh, to github.com slash jk software slash karaya uh, and over there there is a short uh, introduction how to install and use karaya and uh, if you have any questions uh, feel free to to uh, discuss it uh, shoot us an email uh, you can uh, file uh, issue reports uh, or at uh, the github page and uh, yes, we are really excited about this new unit test framework. We are thinking uh, it's going to be an extremely good fit for many projects, uh, especially projects that uh, are more real work projects where people start by developing the code and then they come up with, hey, I'm gonna add some unit test coverage. Uh, and so Karaya makes this all extremely easy, it makes running the unit tests extremely fast because everything is already in memory base uh, and unlike any other unit test framework for LabVIEW, Karaya uh, works within your ID without adding any extra uh, things on top of it, no other framework. You just use VI uh, libraries uh, from the palette and you're good to go. Uh, yeah, uh, so thank you so much for uh, watching this introductory video. Uh, if you have any questions again, uh, please feel free to contact JKI. Uh, if you have a, a need to implement software engineering uh, practices, uh, continuous integration servers, uh, unit testing, and, and uh, good practices on, on uh, using Git or, or Mercurial and other things like that, uh, uh, JKI is really specialized in, in building complex software with LabVIEW uh, and feel free feel to contact us if you think we could be a good fit for your project. Thank you.